Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we discuss day-to-day -day problems people face in their lives. Let's start with the video. I-35 female was raised in a family that honestly is pretty messed up. Reputation and wealth always comes first for everyone and well perfection is the only answer. I'm not even joking, lol. I have a brother, Oliver, 19 male. Everyone adored him and he was definitely favored growing up, but he's been through some crap that has caused him to act out a lot. My mom had enough of his behavior and kicked him out when he was 16. He's been staying with me for the past three years. While living with me, he managed to get his act together as I put him in therapy to help him, and I kind of realized that the whole perfection thing my family drilled into our brains is kind of what was causing him to deteriorate so much. He goes to a good university, is in a sports team, and even has a part-time job. His mental health is still a work in progress, and he does have bad days, but we're working on it. I'm proud of him in all honesty. Anyways, my parents were aware that Oliver was with me but only contacted him a couple of times in the past years. I would say I get it because of how stressful it's been, but I don't. That's your son for F's sake. Well, a few months ago my parents decided to divorce. Which, hey, good for them. Should have happened years ago, but whatever. Ever since, my mom has been trying to convince me to let her talk to hang out with Oliver. This extreme switch up isn't good for him as he relies on stability a lot, and I told her this. She started crying when I did and said that she's his mother. I kind of rolled my eyes and said something like, what a great mom, sarcastically, and she cried even harder. She said she was sorry for kicking him out, but she just didn't know how to deal with a problem child anymore. It wasn't her fault, etc. I didn't think she was really getting my point, as I'm more annoyed by the whole perfection bullcrap she never shut up about, even though I have problems with that, but I let her rant. Then, I told her straight up that I wouldn't and couldn't help her with Oliver until he said he was ready. Even then, I don't know if I'd encourage him and that she needs to live with her decisions. She practically called me an a-hole and said she was his mom, not me. But I ignored her. It's been a while now and I haven't heard from her and I feel a little guilty. What right do I have to keep a mom away from her precious son is kind of what's been going on in my head. It's what she said as well. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She kicked him out when he was a minor. What the hell? And it's very likely that even if she has good intentions, she will take out the current crisis she's going through in her life on her son and or use him as an emotional support pillar when he is still trying to rebuild his mental health. Also, can she not contact him herself? Why is she putting you in the middle? You keep protecting Oliver. She is not sorry if she can't even admit what she did is wrong and is still calling him a problem child. She's getting a divorce and not looking to rebuild a bond. She's looking to displace her emotions and for something to cling on to. She needs to take time to herself, go get counseling, and honestly, and honestly, if y'all let her back in her first visits with him, need to be in a family counseling office with a therapist who will tell her what's what and not let her run him over. Not the a-hole, as long as you're not blocking communication. She should be able to contact him through email at least, and he can decide if he wants to respond. He's 19, so not a kid even though he's still young. You can let him know that you'll support him if he wants to ignore or block her or start talking to her again. But other than that, it's not your place to determine if they have contact with one another. That should be up to him. From the sounds of it, your mother doesn't behave like an adult, stable parent. I highly doubt her motivation for wanting to reach out to Oliver is anything more than a void left behind from getting divorced. I would stick firm to your decision until your mother has gone to a decent amount of therapy herself. Kids, regardless of age, aren't toys for parents to make themselves feel better about themselves. 100% not the a-hole. You're being an amazing sister and family member to your brother. That literally made my heart happy. You stood up to your mom on his behalf. You're doing a fantastic job of establishing boundaries with your mom. Keep up the great work. A tip I learned about establishing boundaries, especially with parents, family, generally speaking, the people you have to establish and reinforce boundaries with are not going to like it and will retaliate or push back, get mad. This is normal and should be ignored and the boundaries should be kept in place. You're absolutely correct that your mother can suffer the consequences of her crappy parenting choices. It's time for her to sleep in the bed she made and deal with it. I literally cannot applaud you enough for being such an amazing sibling. I really wish I could give you an award. Keep up the good work and do not give her an inch. 
Your mother's attitude is shocking to me. I cannot imagine kicking out my adolescent son for being a teenager, and now she wants to play mother again after you did all the effort she was supposed to? Jeez. If she was not capable of being a positive influence in his life before, it's really hard to believe she can bring any value for him now. You can talk to your brother and let him know she reached out and maybe advise her to seek some counseling of her own to maybe get a bit of perspective and self-awareness, and then maybe try some baby steps to establish a relationship with your brother. Under no circumstances, circumstance should you endanger his well-being and progress by enabling to get close she lost the privilege to be called his mother the moment she almost ruined his life and future update after all your reassurances that i was doing the right thing which i was really doubting i called my mother and told her my decision is final and she's not allowed to contact my brother until and unless he his therapist is okay with it she cried her heart out and it almost made me sad, but I can't bring myself to feel bad for her anymore. I'm just so tired of her. She messages me twice a day still, but I haven't replied to a single text. I would tell her to F off, but I'm dealing with unrelated family issues, so I can't do that right now. As for Oliver, the last week has been a little bit of a struggle. Nothing super related to my mother, but that's the thing with mental health. Even the slightest thing can be a trigger. But we're working on it. Like I said in my last post, stability is the main thing that's helping him. It's why having our mom visit would be a very bad idea. She'd turn his world upside down very quickly and throw him off our schedule. Due to circumstances, he's still in the early stages of recovery and is still not mentally, emotionally ready to meet our mom, who is a huge trigger. I don't think I mentioned my daughter, but she's currently watching Frozen while I'm writing this, and the only thing on my mind is, do you want to build a snowman? So I'm sorry if I'm not wording this properly. But yeah, I know for many the answer may have seemed obvious, but sometimes I feel as if I'm overstepping because although I love my brother, I'm not his mom. Might as well be, but that's a whole other thing. One more final thing I wanted to add. Why am I making decisions for him? He's an adult, right? Yes, technically, but because of his mental health problems, he does not have the same grown mindset as others his age. It's one of the reasons he's in therapy. Anyways, to the people DMing me for an update, nothing much happened, but I assure you, Oliver is my top priority right now. Thanks for worrying about him, though. Just read the original, she lost her right to be his mother when she chose kicking him out because I didn't know how to handle a problem child over actively trying to figure out what she can do to help. You may not be his mom, but at least you took a responsibility and didn't give up on him. Agreed. I don't understand how a mother can just abandon their child when things get tough. Extremely specific reasons aside, I just do not get it, especially since I have a child of my own now. I don't think I can ever forgive her for it. She didn't even tell me that she kicked him out. Thank God I showed up for a visit only a few days after. My husband and I were freaking out trying to figure out where he had gone and she just shrugged and told us not to bother. That he'll straighten himself out on his own. Just thinking back to those days makes me angry. I could rant forever to be honest. Thank you for your comment and I'm glad I didn't give up on him either. I'm happy I gave him a chance to grow and heal because he's doing so much better now. You're doing the right thing, and I hope your mom doesn't come up with the idea to have a surprise visit at your home. Not sure if she knows where you live or not, particularly with your current family issues and Oliver still needing continuous stability and therapy. If she still insists that Oliver is a problem child, she may still treat him like one. Good on you to put up those boundaries and continue to protect Oliver. Whatever the issues you and Oliver are dealing with, I hope they pass. Take care, original poster. She doesn't know where we live and we live about an hour away. Thank you for your well wishes. While I know what happened to Oliver will stay with him for his entire life, I have hope that he can get better, that he'll be stronger and happier. He's already in a much better place than he used to be and I'm confident he'll be okay. Obviously, there will be bumps down the road and this is just one of them thank you once again and you take care as well from a person going through a similar situation with an abusive parent not understanding my boundaries oliver is so lucky to have you my aunt has been helping maintain my boundaries with my dad because it's so mentally exhausting to me in my recovery i feel so grateful to have her as i'm sure oliver does to have you next story my husband and i have four kids between us my stepson is 13 and I love him very much, but he is very much into acting like a 13-year-old right now. His mother is very conflicted and frequently tries to stir up trouble via the kids. She once told my stepson that if his dad really loved him, he would divorce me after I said he couldn't eat literally six donuts for breakfast, if that gives you any idea. My husband and I share parenting duties with all the kids and we generally all have really good relationships. Off note, 
We give the kids pretty large age-appropriate allowances, which she does not, and we provide pretty much all of the kids' monetary support, about double mandated child support. Anyway, it is a tradition in my family for grandparents to give both cash and a check for birthdays and holidays. The cash is for fun money and the check is to put in their college accounts. The checks are made out to the kids with college on the memo line. They give at least one other gift as well. My stepkids were included in this tradition as soon as their dad and I got married eight years ago. We saw their great grandmother yesterday who does the same tradition for them. She hadn't seen them in the last year for obvious reasons, so she gave all of the kids their gifts yesterday. The other three kids thanked her, gave hugs, pocketed the cash, and then stuck the checks in my purse to put it in their college accounts. My stepson pocketed the envelope and walked away. As we were settling in for the night, I asked for the check so that I could deposit it. He said, I'm just gonna hold on to this. I told him no, that's for his college account, and he told me that it was his and he should be able to do whatever he wants with it. I was firm, he handed it over, and that was that for the time being. Well, today he's giving me the silent treatment, and we're getting a stream of text messages from his mother saying that we have no right to do that, we are financially and emotionally abusing him, etc. I don't think that I'm the a-hole because, one, it is what the money was explicitly intended for, two, the kids don't really need oodles of money at their disposal at this age, and three, they will be a lot happier in the long run, having access to that money when they're older. Also, if their mother really feels so strongly about this, she is more than capable of giving them money herself. My husband agrees with me and is just ignoring her texts, which is really the only way to deal with her when she gets like this. Why I might be the a-hole. The checks are indeed made out to the kids and maybe it should be their choice how to use it. Not the a-hole. Your only mistake was telling the child and his mother about your college fund gift too early. You should have just kept that info to yourself, kept saving it, and when the child grew up to truly deserve the help, then give it to him. To be honest, I wouldn't have even told your husband about the gift. For now, only you and your family who are donating the money should have been in the loop. You can't tell someone about a gift early because they're gonna want it right now. They'll demand it like it's owed to them. Most times, they start thinking they should regularly get the gift. Your son's mom is going to keep looking for that money. She's going to stay in your son's ear too, twisting it. I'd lie and tell both of them that I don't want money to hurt our relationship, so I've decided not to intrude into his future because I know his mom wants to handle it all by herself. Not the a-hole. If it is a family tradition on your side to give a gift for college funds, and it is a problem of the check being made out to the child, the family can start making the check to the father, and the father can make the appropriate deposit. If the child and the mother want to make a big enough stink, maybe the child will receive a cash gift, less the amount they would have been happy to deposit in the college fund. Nobody owes him any gift. Not the a-hole. But I don't understand why they're being handed the college checks to begin with. As a mother, I would put the college money directly into their college accounts and let them have the fun money directly. They may not quite understand why they can't have the money to spend on video games and smartphones. You're not the a-hole here because my parents actually took my fun birthday money away from me and made me spend it on furniture and books for college years later. And that's not what you're doing. Next story. My sister-in-law, 20, and her husband, 24, came over to my 28 female house last night for dinner. My sister-in-law is a dog lover to the extreme, as in her entire life is based solely around dogs and that's it. Has no career path, no goals, no job, nothing. She says she's waiting for her dream career to arise, to foster dogs and rehome them. She refuses to do anything in the meantime. This is not an attempt to bash the woman. This is me outing exactly why she did what she did because she truly believes she is the most knowledgeable person ever when it comes to dogs. My husband and I got a dog last year and she has an ulcer and sensitivities to a lot of foods. She's on medications for it. That and we have a very strict rule of no table scraps at all unless it's obviously on her approved diet list and it's then stuck in her dish. Never ever is it given to her by hand. This is due to the fact that in the very beginning we made this mistake of giving her approved table scraps by hand and it led to her ripping food out of people's hands. It was very hard to break her of it. It seemed like every single time I turned my back, this girl was holding her hand under the table feeding my dog handfuls of cheese and chicken. 
She cannot have cheese. It makes her vomit from both ends. Chicken is touch and go, but this chicken was heavily seasoned with a bunch of spices that she most definitely cannot have without getting sick either. I told her to stop immediately and told her about the medical issues. She goes into a speech about how she knows what dogs can and cannot have because she has done research and then tries telling me ways to fix my dog's ulcer. I thought it was done. But two more times she did it and when I flipped out. She laughed and said, oh my god, I'm so sorry, it's just a habit, I forgot. I let it slide. But then she gives my dog a cracker right in front of me and I screamed, get the F out, as soon as I saw it. It was loud. I lashed out and I shouldn't have. She then started flipping out on me, saying I'm depriving my dog and at this point I'm just being controlling because a cracker isn't going to do any damage, which is correct. She can have crackers. It was just the principle of it because I told her, do not freaking feed her from your hand as well. My fiance thinks I overreacted because his sister left crying. She is the literal baby of the family, so of course he's defending her. Am I the a-hole? not the a-hole. Also, keep in mind if she ever becomes a foster for a rescue and you inform them of this incident, they will absolutely blacklist her from fostering with them. Rescues don't like to mess around with the health of their animals. Maybe you flipped, but you shouldn't have to tell a grown woman 500 times not to mess with your dog's health and feeding habits surrounding it, especially in your own house. I'm sure you can apologize for your outburst, but she ought to learn soon where the line is. Not the a-hole. A true dog lover doesn't feed them things that will make them sick. She messed up with your dog's health and she disrespected you in your home. Ideally, you wouldn't have lost your temper when you asked her to leave, but I think most people would have, so don't beat yourself up about that. If a guest in your house is unwilling to follow a simple rule, take off your shoes, don't feed the dog, don't smoke inside, etc, etc, then they have zero respect for you. Not the a-hole. You know when someone disrespects you right in front of your face, they get asked to leave. You don't even have to explain why. She knows absolutely nothing about dogs if she thinks that what she did is okay. You don't feed dogs things they can't have. You don't undermine training. And you don't presume to know what is better for the dog than the owners. Your fiancé's sister and husband are total a-holes. They were abusing your dog by giving him the wrong food, especially after you told them explicitly and multiple times not to do so. Your husband should stop making excuses for his sister. They need to grow up.